guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is a tutorial using the Mercury Retrograde Palettes from Huda Beauty that I've been obsessed with lately. I did do a quick review if you're interested. It's a review and swatch video. I honestly use quite a few <laughs> shades in the palette because why not? I also pulled out some other newer items to my collection including brushes and the Danessa Myricks waterproof cream palette. I put all of that together to create this look. So let's go ahead and make up our faces. I'm gonna start this look using my R39 Morphe. I've been really liking this color. It's a purple berry. Pack this into the outer half of my chosen crease. My crease is actually a little bit lower and I'm putting it into the deepest part of the eye socket. You can see that it's, it's a little bit higher than my actual crease. That way I give myself a little bit more lid space to put some fancy shimmers. I'm just sort of popping this color on by patting first and then blending. That way I get the pigment to stick right where I want it. You get less fallout. Okay, so I'm just lightly blending this out. This color reminds me a lot of a color in the Natasha Denona Cranberry Palette. That one was more of a cream to powder formula, but the reason it reminds me of that is that when you build it up, it becomes this really deep purple grape. So beautiful. And then when you blend it out, it's a lighter red, pink raspberry. It's, it's a color full of dimension. Hot Mess in this palette is just a surprising favorite of mine. Off Balance, another favorite. This one also reminds me of a beautiful color in a Natasha Denona palette. I believe the Safari. There's this light pink matte in there that's just gorgeous. And I'm just feathering this above the hot mess. This cream momentum color and use this at the very top here underneath the brow. Create a smooth gradient. A little bit of vortex, this deepest color here. I rely on this color a lot and I'm so pleased that it's not straight black but more of aubergine. Absolutely perfect with these kinds of colors. I get a little bit tired of always using black Hakuhodo S146, a little bit more precise and pointy. I'm gonna do a nice base up in here for shimmer. I will use Utopia, this gorgeous peach matte. Pat this right into the inner third of the lid. Ooh, I just love this color. Very tropical to me. My mind is still in Puerto Rico on vacation. Okay, I'm going to blend that into the crease up in the center. Some of this turquoise. This is called a haze and it is stunning. I'm going to go ahead and pack that into the outer half. My friend Ellen said she was a bit disappointed that there weren't more bright mattes in this palette. I could definitely see what she meant, but I was really happy. There are half mattes, half textured shadows, and while a lot of the mattes are neutral leaning, I feel like they're not just brown, that there are some really beautiful colors, colors in here, you know? Like I was saying with the, the aubergine deep shade, that it's stunning and there are, in my opinion, only two brown colors. This one and this one. 
The rest are like cues. I'm so asymmetrical, but it's okay. Now if you try and blend Utopia into Haze too much, you're gonna just get brown. Since we're putting shimmer, I don't think it matters too much if it gets a little muddy up in there. These mattes are a bit on the powdery side. They've got a lot of kick up, but I don't mind too much. So I'm kind of in between Frazzled and Supernova. Frazzled is on my ring finger and Supernova is on my pinky. I'm thinking Supernova and I'm gonna go ahead and pat that onto the inner half here, right on top of the peach. Oh, it's so pretty. Duochrome peachy pink. It's got some burgundy, cranberry, and it shifts to gold. I'm taking my Wayne Goss number 19 brush, swirling that in Supernova, just to blend the edges a little bit. Get it right in the inner corner. These apply nicely with a brush but you're gonna get fuller pigment with your finger or a sponge tip applicator. Okay, I'm gonna take my little sponge applicator from Royal and Langnickel and go into Gold Glitch, this color right here. The inner third, that color is also something special, I must say. Just glides on. So shiny and pretty. I got a tiny bit of fallout from that shade because it's so flaky. I think I want to use Nebula, my favorite color in the whole palette. This one here. I have a feeling I'm going to want Mercury in there somewhere too. So maybe I should use that one first so that I put Nebula in the center. Wayne Goss number 19. I'm just going to go into Mercury, the blue purple duochrome glitter pat that into the outer edge i did a winged liner using the mercury color and it was so pretty catching the light i'm actually going to take this onto the lower lash line a bit too start to hook this color down and around hugging the eye mm. I do love this mercury color. I feel like you can do so many different things with this palette. I'm gonna go ahead and take my finger with Nebula. I'm gonna just pat this right on top of the middle. I'm using a little pat and swipe motion. Oh, I hope it's picking up on camera. It's so pretty. It's like a, a loose, glittery, a haze of silver, lavender, so pretty. Calling all lower lash line lovers out there, what do you think? Should we really intensify the lower lash line? I feel like we need a bit of anchoring, don't we? Okay, so I think the perfect pairing would be my dual eye pencil from Isam, Rosé and Aubergine Duo. And with the Rosé shade, it's a light shimmery pink. I'm gonna put that in the waterline with the hopes that my eye ends up looking bigger. Brings a little bit of light and life. And then with the aubergine, bring that on my upper waterline from underneath. My lower lash line underneath the waterline. I'm going to work that into the lower lashes. I'm going to go right underneath the inner corner. I'm going to also bring this on the upper lash line on the outer third. Just scribbling that right on. And using a little pointed Q-tip, I'm going to clean up right underneath and start to smudge that out. And then with a flat 
detail brush. This is a NARS one. I'm going to go ahead and take Vortex and pack that right on top of those areas so the outer edge of the upper lash line outer edge of the lower lash line connecting it to the upper across through to the lower inner corner my little Hakuhoto brush I'm gonna go ahead and take a tad bit of Libra this beautiful mat here smoke out the lower lash line a bit just going right across the two-thirds of the inner lower lash line and as a final touch I'm going to take that sponge tip applicator and go into super moon the white shimmer and pat it onto the inner corner right above the line that we created this is another really stunning color honestly I like all the colors in this palette Okay, so I went ahead and threw on my Pat McGrath Mini Mascara and my Ardell Magnetic Lashes in style number two. Now I'm going to throw on some foundation. I already cleaned up the fallouts and moisturized my complexion. I'm going to use a bit of primer. Today I'm using the Pat McGrath Primer with the Pat McGrath Foundation in color number light three, Surratt Foundation Brush. The foundation is a bit light for me at the moment. I got quite a bit of sun, despite, you know, doing my best to avoid it in Puerto Rico. So I am quite a bit tanned up at the moment. This brush is a little prickly. I don't know that I would recommend it for the price, to be honest. Like, it does a really nice job of making the skin look really nice and smooth, applying any liquids and creams, but it's a little harsh on areas I have a lupus rash. I'm a good two shades darker than this one. So one of the reasons I have not filmed in a while was because I've been in a flare-up. My rash has been really bad. But I'm on some steroids now, and it's really taken down, you know, cut off the edge of my flare. So I'm able to do more. I was also stressed because I am trying to get this art job, and I just have some stuff going on where I'm really trying my best to work. But I am sorry that I haven't filmed for you guys in a hot minute, and I'm hoping I can get a few videos up for you soon. I'm going to use this Charlotte Tilbury color corrector, color number one. And I actually have been kind of obsessed with this. It works so nicely, doesn't crease, cancels everything out, and for the most part I don't even need to go in with a skin tone concealer afterwards because the coverage is really nice and it's so thin in texture Ooh, it's a good one just does such a great job at being skin like and thin I'm going to take this Isam T43 and go ahead and get this inner corner and line right underneath that lash line work we did Danessa Myrick's Beauty Waterproof Cream Palette. We've got lots of fun shades in this. I'm going to use my favorite. This is the Isam T47. My favorite for this type of product. First, I would like to go into this light pink and push that into the apples of the cheeks. Now with Cream blushes, I find that, you know, you look scary at first, you're putting on so much, but it blends and sinks into the skin, so don't fret if you're feeling like you look like a clown when you first put it on. It won't be as vibrant once you blend it in and set it and all of that. So I'm just 
using a padding motion, this brush is super soft and it picks up the product so nicely. Then I'm going to go ahead and take a bit of the red up here. And I'm going to put that on the outer sides of that cheek. We'll also use the purple a little bit, but first the red. I'm going to take a bit of the purple and bring that beautiful purple up by the hairline. It's a little better, but still crazy looking blush. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take some setting powder and set around the T-zone and all of that. This is my Surratt angled brush. That's gonna tone down the color a bit, which is why I wanted to make sure I put plenty of blush on so that it would be a noticeable element of the look. I am going to pull out the Pat McGrath Astral Blue Star Chroma Lux Highlight Cream this sets really nicely, so you can actually use it on the eyes and lips too without it creasing. I'm going to take some and pat this onto the cheeks. Blue sparkle shimmer. The Mouge Bouge lipstick in Beetroot from Bite Beauty. Kind of goes with my headband. Okay, and then as a final touch, brows. So this was a lifesaver for me on my trip to Puerto Rico. I was sweating so hot and I was, you know, getting in the water and I was just going through a lot. And this was the only product I brought with me for my brows. I don't have full amazing brows, but this brow defining pencil from Isim stayed put all day, every day without ever needing a retouch. I really love the staying power of this, the buildability, the natural look of it. I mean, everything about this brow pencil from the size to the fact that it has a spoolie on the other end to the color match, just absolutely phenomenal product. They have three colors, but I really like this one in brunette for my tone. You know, look how natural that looks. If you do put this in your purse. It's not gonna mark up the lining of your purse because the cap falls off. It really clicks and it's just fabulous quality. It's slimmer than most pencils too in packaging. I can't say enough good things about it. It was just fabulous. The perfect thing for me to bring. Okay guys, so this is the final look. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and don't forget to chat with me in the comment section down below. All my hugs to all my Cake Face fam. Catch you in my next one. Bye guys.